Right, great theme. Uh, and a great sweater, great car. So I stand in there. As soon as I came out the building, started walking off. Right. So Pam came back from her uh, trip. Of course, started targeting me, wearing all black. I'm like, every time I see her go out, she's always wearing all black. Then she comes into the living room and literally pulled down her one side of her shirt. All right, where you know and she's wearing black nail polish and you wouldn't believe what she did i see you looking buddy keep walking keep walking all right i should tell you <laughs> so he just he stood by the building just he could look love and i'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys so on his shirt it says love why I was just about to tell you guys. So Pam came in the the house. All right, like I said, dressed in all black. Came back out. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? And um, she had on. Uh, she she basically walked up in the living room towards me. Okay. Pulled her shirt down from the from her collar. Let me see if I can turn this. Okay literally pull her shirt down like like this okay <laughs> let me pull up let me see if i can do this properly like this and take her pointing finger this finger and put it over her heart right so that's why the dude was waiting outside of the outside of her building and as he sees me he walked off and why his shirt had the word love on it so i want you to sh tell you how to they do these type of subliminal messaging now what the heck is this person doing all right okay so you see what they're doing here oh yeah. okay <sighs> literally he got up on the on the gate just so you can bend down to show me his rear end, <laughs> right? He, they, he literally did that as I was walking across the street, got, as I got close, that's what they did. See? I tell you, a bunch of idiots, bunch of idiots. And, you know, like I said, with Pam, what what they're doing, these races, what they're doing, particularly with some with some of our women, black women, is that they are, again, like what they try to do with me to silence me from speaking the truth about what they was what what it was that they were doing and continue to do. And uh, uh, guy in a wheelchair again over there. I've been I've been seeing a lot of people in a wheelchair this week, and I'll tell you why. All right, <laughs> I told you guys why. So anyhow, in order to silence the fact that they're psychologically running psychological conditioning on us and the illegal implantation and to silence us by giving us jobs or position, you know, money and so that we will remain silent even though what they're doing not only harm us psychologically because let me tell you i know she's i know she's being manipulated because my son keeps on all the time she's like Mom, mommy has always mommy be having these breakdowns <laughs> you know crying crying you know these crying spells and i'm like yeah because again this is what they're doing this is what they're doing they try to do it with me try to bribe me with money okay to be silent about their illegal uh, implantation, non-consensual human experimentation. And so, hey, like I said, and they're always trying to tell me why I choose the wrong side. No, I didn't choose the wrong side. I choose the right side. I choose the side that's to speak the truth against these evil mother effers 
who have been wreaking havoc in the black community, running covert warfare and covert psychological warfare on us in order to do what they're doing, which is to create a, a divide within the black community and between black men and black women, okay? And these women are very, very cold-hearted. They will lie. They, you know, they, it's like, you know, I always say, you know, black women and a lot of black men, but I call them Negropeans, the Negropeans, they have adopted this white mindset in terms of how they view each other as black people in, in, in they have the same they look at through the same lens as the white supremacist mindset when it comes to their brothers and sisters okay and particularly if they don't um, believe in Christianity okay this is what they'll do and I just refuse to um, be a part of that Right, knowing what I know or what they've done, and how they, uh, you know, I was watching Dr. Ray Higgins, and he had a video, and he says, you know, what these Christians would do is that they will literally cause you harm, and then come in and try to bring you to Christ. You know, and I said, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. And particularly with these weapons that they, um, that they've developed to control our minds, they can absolutely do that. And yet we have, you know, that's why we're, so, we're such a passive people. <laughs> we're such a passive people that it, it kills me that when, uh, but we're not passive when, we, when it comes to killing each other, you know? And that's the thing, we are, we are conditioned to do each other great harm because we view each other with the eyes and mind of the white racists. So it's nothing. It's nothing when these women sacrifice their, their children for a little bit of money. And that's all they're getting is a little bit of money. It's a BF3 used. <laughs> yeah, they're always, trying to, they're always trying to run that skit. Oh, I'm being used. Listen, we're all being used. Okay, so it don't it don't bother me just as long as my kids are, are fine. That's what matters. Okay. So I, I want the, 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 again. <laughs> Look at that shrug. She might as well, she she might as well not wear anything. Like New York credit department rolling down. <laughs> of course, soon as he turns, right? BF three use. <laughs> So, yeah, you guys heard the sirens? The whoop? Right? Um, yeah, so this is what they were engaging in. Look at this. Look at this stuff, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I better not catch my daughter dressing like that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I told her that. From the, I said, don't you ever dress like that, you hear me? Don't you ever do that. And then she's gonna go sit on somebody's car seat. You know? <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you, you don't know what kind of people been on their car seat. And you're like, uh, you know, as I said, it's like, you know, they seek attention so much that they're willing to put their own health at risk. But that's, that's how we're conditioned. That is, that is how we're conditioned, and they know this, all right? So anyway, I told Pam, I said, listen, I'm not gonna be here Monday. Um, Alyssa, she's gonna walk with her friend to um, the boys and girls, and I'll have the uh, coordinator of the boys and girls look out for her. And um, yeah, i pick up on Tuesday, because it's, it's Halloween Tuesday, so. Uh, uh, she wants to go to the Halloween party, the boys and girls. So I said, fine, I'll, I'll take you there and then I'll pick you back up. All right? Um, yeah. So like I said, like after Pam did what she did tonight, again, you know, she come back and she do these things, right? Because again, this is what they do. You know, like I'm the bad guy. Really? <laughs> okay. 
And that's the thing, you know, they, they've conditioned these women to abuse men and then blame men for, the, for their abuse of men, right? Like, you know, I was watching a, a, um, was it The Crimson Kill, and she was talking about how, you know, you could tell when uh, women and men grow up without fathers in the home, particularly with women, she, they, she was like, you can't, you can't tell them no. If they, she was like, you can tell when a woman grew up in a house with a man because if you tell her no, she doesn't take offense to it. It's women who grew up in their home without her fathers, you can't say no to. And I'm like, dang, she hit that shit on the head because she's absolutely right. Every time I tell Pam no to anything, she's like, why are you saying no to me? You know, you can't say no to me. You shouldn't say, I'm like, what do you mean I shouldn't say no to you? You say no to me all the time. But I can't say no to you, you know? And then it gets to the point where she won't even ask me a question because she know I'll say no. And, and me saying no to her makes her feel some type of way. It literally makes her feel ill. The fact that I say no to her. Okay? And I'm like, you know, I've been telling her to go get therapy for the longest while, but you know, they, you know, like I tell her, I say, yeah, you know, there, you keep following these people and see where it leads you. Okay? Because they're all about manipulation and deception and abusing you. Okay, this is a sick game that they play, the sick agenda. And for black men, we have to be very, very cautious, particularly when it comes to raising our sons and daughters and telling them the truth. You know, because these races will literally entrap every single black boy and man. And men. Okay? They'll literally do that. That is how their mindset is. And I, I didn't realize this until I would say this, the, this, the second decade of my target, because I've been target for over two decades now, right? Is the fact that um, they, they, are, they will literally do that. Look, homeless team. <laughs> homeless team. Homeless team. Look at that. Right? So as I say, yeah, they they will literally do this. And again, because we have no clue or no, no idea. Right? And so we always gotta be aware of that. Yeah, so like I said, when she came in and she did that, that's why you know you had the guy had the shirt that says love on it. <laughs> you know, because she literally took her index finger, pulled down her, her, her shirt from the collar, and put her index finger over her heart but I'm like wow but I'm like that's odd like why would you do that you know that's not a normal behavior so like I said you know how to use the use the color black a lot you know and how they try to manipulate my emotions I know what they're doing. I may go through the, some of that, some of that emotions, but let me tell you, don't. I, I understand. I know what it is that they're doing, right? Because you know when they engage in this you, you, um, emotional manipulation, yeah, you can. You know, like I said, you can go through the, you can go through the, the, the emotion, but make sure that you your head is straight. Make sure that because you understand what's going on, so you can go through the. Like I said, I used to walk home from work, being threatened, basically paranoid, right? But I'm also, I was all trying to figure shit out. It has never got me to the point where I became so, uh, uh, you know, particularly with the fight or flight, to the point where I would fight or flight in a manner that will harm me or in, in any way, no, would never do that. Like I said, I always try to figure stuff out because I know that I was going to figure this stuff out. And they know that I figured this stuff out now. And this is why they're engaging in the attacks that they're engaging in. They understand that I know. Right? Those that are behind the computer, right, operating these signals, trying to play like you're them, like they're your friend. They're not your friend. Don't don't follow that hype. Don't believe that hype. They're there to manipulate you, and then the cleanup people, 
these are the racists on the police force. They come in and scoop you up and put you in a mental institution. Or if you, or if they manipulate you to the point where, you know, they start to manipulate your emotions to where you can't even control your emotions, you might end up in the penitentiary, all right? And no one, no one would know what was done to you. No one would know, why? Because they would not be looking at any sort of psychological condition they done to you, right? Because again, this is what they do. And the minute you talk about this stuff, like the weapons and, and the psychological programming, they label you with a mental illness. And this is why I do what I do. This is why I record, this is why I do the videos. So you can see exactly what it is that they do, right? And they feel very, very, you know, uh, uh, emboldened at times, like they do tonight. So what you see tonight is not really, you know, they, they're not, particularly people walking by, you don't see them doing a lot of the hand signals. Why? Because of what they did with Pam, right? They tried to, you know, get me to, to hate her or dislike her, you know? And they'll use her to try to emotionally hurt me. And she enjoys that. She enjoys that. She enjoys that. Okay? She don't do it to the guys who just want to sleep with her. Right? The guys who, you know, will take her out, sleep with her, not commit. But they'll do it to the person who, who was committed to them. Right? They, they will definitely do it to the person who was committed to them. Right? Because, what does it say? She did the... Okay. <sighs> right? And that's modern women. You know, that's why I like watching The Crimson Kill because she breaks it down to the point where it's, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yo, she is, <laughs> you know, like she knows exactly what, you know, whoever is, whoever is giving her these, this information, you know, they're, they're spot on, spot on, okay? And so, and even with Fortnite, how they, you know, how they will play their game in Fortnite. Like I said, I study that shit. It, don't, it doesn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? I, I choose certain emojis and I use it. You know, because again, I understand how they do things to create emotional, uh, how they use emotional contagion using certain things. I know. So it doesn't really bother me. Though I know it bothers them because when I use a certain emoji, <laughs> they, they would like, there's two emoji that's, you know, like you shake your head if you press on the, the control stick. You shake your head, right? They'll use that. Whenever I use certain emoji, like whenever I use the WE belt, you know, where you pick it up and you hold it up in your hand, uh, up in the air. And then you, when I use the um, the trophy for, you know, like they have the, the football league trophy, and I hold it up, right? They will use that, you, they will use the emoji that, there's an emoji that has, um, it's like, um, like a football, like a referee where it says deny. So, so they will use that. So that's why I know exactly what it is that they do, and they know that I know what it is that they do. So whenever I, whenever I use that, they will literally use those two emojis, right? And I laugh, you know, because again, it's a it's it's a video game, so I keep it in that realm. It's a video game. That's it. You know, I don't get upset or angry. You know what I'm saying? I, got, I use the same tactics back on them to make them feel the same. And they do. They, they do. When I use it to the point, they do. Some of them will leave the game before we, you know, after you finish the, the mission, you know, where you have all the characters, all the players in the, um, in the finishing uh, screen. They will literally, be like tonight, before the, the, um, the mission ended, because again, you know, with Victorious in the mission, you know, one of the perps left. And I'm like, are you leaving? You know, you're not going to get, you know, what? Because you know, at the end, you get like uh, certain um, things when you when you when you um, when you beat the mission. And dude just left. I was like, okay, I guess he, I guess he know what was coming. He didn't want to be on that uh, screen when I started doing those emojis. <laughs> you know, so that was pretty funny. But yeah.
hearing the sirens, they're like, whoop. They get very, very low. All right. So like I said earlier, they were feeling emboldened. Not today. So again, so also what they'll try to do, and I talk about this again, is try to make you jealous. So as a TI, like I said, as a person, I've never been jealous. I mean, listen, I, I've been, uh, my oldest son, his mother, when she he broke off the relationship, you know, he was trying to get back together. And I called her and her phone answered. She probably did it, you know, she probably heard I answered the phone, but she didn't answer the phone, right? So her phone came on and she was having dinner and I was hearing her. And so the next morning, the next day, actually, I called her. I said, hey, you know, how was your night? She was like, ah, it, was, it was okay. I said, what'd you do? She's like, I didn't do nothing. I was home in bed, you know. And I said to her, I said, why are you lying to me? I said, because I called your phone and your phone answered, right? So maybe her phone, you know, sometimes, you know, your phone will answer automatically. Or maybe because, you know, the, the racist cops might have hacked her phone and, and turned it on so I can hear. You know, and um, that was the end of that. I stopped messing with her. Because again, you know, she was, and here, this is, this is, here's somebody who was a stalker, right? So let me tell you, um, early on in our relationship, right, uh, we, were, we were living together and she got assaulted and I was pretty upset because, you know, she had like, uh, you know, uh, a bruise on her face and stuff like that. And she gave me some bullshit story and I know she was lying. See, I, one thing about me is like, like I said, I may, I may love you, but I'm not stupid, okay? So she gave me some bullshit story about how some cab driver wouldn't let, him, let her out of the cab because she told him to go one way and he decided to go another way. Now, there are a lot of times I get in a cab and I tell the driver to get this way. Maybe he might not have heard me or what have you, and he might take a different route, right? And again, the route that he took was going to lead you to the house anyway. So she said she told him to stop the car and he wouldn't let her out. I'm like, okay, why wouldn't he let you out? That was, that's odd, you know? And so she said that um, he assaulted her. I said, okay, fine. You know, I said, I, you know what? You know, I want to see this person. You know, of course she called the cops, what have you. And, um, and it's funny too, because she called the cops and everything like that. And when it happened, she didn't even call me to let me know what happened, right? And at the, at the, at the time, uh, I don't think my son was born yet, right? So I think she was, at the time she was pregnant. She, she wasn't, she, uh, my son wasn't born yet, she was pregnant. And so the, the, the day of the court hearing, I called out from work and I said to her, I'm going with you. And she was like, no, you're not. I said, what you mean I'm not? I said, why not? I don't want you coming with me. I'm like, what? Like literally, this woman tried, this little woman literally fight me. And I said, okay, you know what? And then, so I knew what was up. I knew what, I knew what was up. I knew what was up, okay? And like I said, you know, their personalities is kind of similar. And the fact that they, they're good liars, they're lying. Well, let me say that, no, Pam is not a good liar, <laughs> okay? She's a terrible liar. Right, but I'm saying they 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 lie without any remorse. You know what I'm saying? They lie without any remorse. Now, if you ask me a question, I'll tell you the truth. Right? But I'm not gonna just volunteer give you information if I was cheating. That's not gonna happen. Right? And again, you know, um, after that relationship, never really got into another relationship. All right, except for when I met Pam. And that relationship, I was like, you know what? I'm much older now, in my 30, early 30s, you know, can't be acting like if I was in my 20s anymore. So this is what I talk about as men grow, grow, get older, we mature. But in our, in, in, when we, in our 20s, we're a lot more immature than uh, young women in their 20s. When we get older, we get to hit that 30, 40, we get mature. Women, on the other hand, they start aging backwards in their mind, right? They, or they, I should, I should say, they get, they still, they're still stuck in their twenties, right? So anyway, like I said, so after that, I was like, okay, yeah, you, you, you were cheating, and it wasn't the first time I've noticed things too, 
And so, you know, I was seeing an ex on the side. And she literally, I don't, she literally like, I don't know how she found out, but she found out and she contact my ex both of them came to my job I was like wow I, that's some shit that I would do even when Pam was cheating even when her cheating on you I wouldn't do some shit like that you know because at the time I was young immature I was like oh okay two can play that game you know but the thing is that these women they'll cheat on you but if you cheat on them oh they can't take it they can no they will lose their damn mind alright but that's the case with anybody who cheats right so, you know, they, they feel like they can cheat, but the minute you cheat, they lose their damn mind. So, yeah, so, you know, again, so, you know, so why am I saying all this? What I'm saying all this is that, is that as a black man, when women do these things, it's okay for them. They get away with it, right? Your sisterhood will, will tell them, yeah, girl, you know, he wasn't paying you attention. So, yeah, you do what you have to do. Now, if it was the man doing it, you know, they would have been like, what, what, what you mean she wasn't paying you attention? You're her man, you this and that, all this stuff, right? Making excuses. But that's how black women have been conditioned. This is how they've been conditioned, right? And we see this, the lack of accountability. They won't even apologize. They won't even, you know, with me, I, I have no problem apologizing. I've always been like that. Women, on the other hand, that I've dated, when it comes to apologies, non-existent. Non-existent, you know? Like when Pam cheated on me, you know, she told me, she was like, um, you know, that's, that's how relationship goes. You know, sometimes, you know, you're the one that, that's going to be asked out. I'm like, I'm like, really? For a dude that never claimed you? For a dude that you would take you out just so he could have sex with you? But never claimed you? And as soon as he found his match, you know, the woman he prefer, you know, the, the, the light skin, long hair type that he leaves you for? And that's who you want to—that's who you want to go back to. And guess what happened? You end up doing the same thing again. So, I'm—I'm I'm getting all the blunt of that. The punishment is what I'm getting from that. Okay? And I keep telling her, I said, I'm not your whipping boy. I'm not. I, like I told you the other day, I said, you better check that tone, and you could go speak to whoever it is that you're talking to, whoever it is blowing your back out. You speak to him that way. You don't speak to me that way. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was, it, was just, it was just hilarious, man. But they are being conditioned psychologically, all right? And it's, it's these races on the police force, all right? And, and the ones in the churches that look like, like me. Because again, they want that money. They want that money and women, black women in particular, when it comes to the black churches, you know, they are their biggest contributors, right? So. Of course, they're not, these pastors, they're not going to tell them the truth. What they've done is condition them with so much lies to make them feel happy and feel good that they can't, you can't tell them the truth anymore. You can't. They can't, they can't, like, what's that movie with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson? Uh, um, you can't, he says, you can't handle the truth. This is, that's how they are. They cannot handle the truth. Everything you say to them, they take it as an attack. Right? As an attack. You know, I got, she, when I spoke to her yesterday, she was talking about how um, Ethan got called to the nurse. I said to her, I said, you know, Ethan got to school early again. She's like, uh, I said, so I guess he's, he had a, he's probably having a good day. She's like, no, he's not because the nurse called me and this and that, that he's picking at his scab. And I'm like, okay, so that doesn't neg negate the fact that he got to school early. Right? <laughs> and I said, I said to him, I told him to use his eczema cream. It's right there. I said, he's like you. You know, you, you all wait till you break out an eczema, till your eczema gets worse, and all of a sudden, now you wanna, you want me to come rub cream on your back or whatever, whatever. And she's like, no. And she's like, this, this, this month I've been using my cream. I said, Pamela, I've known you for how long? Okay, this is, that's what you do. You know, and the fact that she's, I can, I can tell, I said, you know what, you need to understand your reality. Not the shit that goes on in your head because it's the total opposite, right? I said, you're a reactionary, you're not preventative. You are not. Every end of the month, your eczema flare up. Why? Because you don't, you're not taking your 
You ask me, you're not taking your medication. I also gotta, gotta remind you about your medication. And then when I remind you about your medication, because I'm reminding you, you wanna get upset. I tell you, she just trying to be so difficult. And I'm just like, look, we're not together. You, know, you, you don't have to sneak around and, and whatever. We're, we're not together. I understand that. Okay? But don't think you're gonna have me as some backup guy. That's not gonna happen. That's not happening, okay? So, yeah, I say I may still care for you, but I'm not no backup guy. Okay, when you, when you, when you get, when you done being uh, 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 tired off from riding the dick carousel, oh, yeah, ain't no way I'm, yeah, I'm not that dude. I am not that dude. I'm not that desperate. Okay? <laughs> I am not that desperate. All right? All right? Not, not to say maybe once in a while I might not tap that behind, but that's it. It, it, it ain't, ain't going to be no relationship. It ain't going to be no, no, <laughs> no, no thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is what they do. This is what they do. And again, there is a pattern. If you look, if, if you look at the patterns of particularly black women, right? They follow through a specific pattern because they have been conditioned that way. It, and it is conditioned. Don't let anybody tell you it's not conditioned. Whenever you see a group of people behaving in a certain way that's negative and they have negative outcome, particularly in their relationships, in their family, Right, amongst friends, because they'll throw each other under the bus like crazy. Right? It's it is that their condition. You know, for those of us who know, when we try to tell them, say, hey, you know, it's a conditioning thing. You know, they they got you so confused about your sexuality now because you know you're you're 40 something years old going to be 50. And now you want to ex experiment and find yourself. You don't find yourself through sex. Okay? Sex is not how you find yourself. You know, because they've been giving women advice. So, you know, you, you, you got to sleep with different men to see what you like. No, you don't. No, you don't. Women are different from men. They're not going to tell you about the psychological, uh, the negative psychological effect of sleeping with different men right and on top of that you're a woman you can get pregnant okay this is why you see uh, single household led women running those household with kids because they do not listen to the men if the man tell you if a man said listen I'm not ready for kids y'all having sex if y'all not using protection, I have you. at least you should, as a woman, because you're the one that gotta carry a baby, the responsibility is more on you, okay? Which means that you got more forms of birth control. Get on birth control. Get on birth control. And I guarantee you, if a man sees that you do that and he say, you know what? She's really listening to me. You know? She really respects what I say. You'll have a better relationship even if he wasn't going to take you seriously. After that, he will take you seriously. Because then he, he knows. See, men know when women don't take them seriously. Like I said, we just, we know it. It's, it's, it's something that's innate. Right? Because women don't listen. They do opposite of what we say. Because again, they've been conditioned to not listen to us. And it's not their fault. It's done on the subconscious level. You know, and I understand that. So I don't even say anything and what they will do also is ruin the relationship between the father and the son so if the if the man didn't want to have a child but they had the child anyway and even if that man you know step up to the to the plate and be a father and take care of that child right if the relationship goes sour or south they and that child that man that father has a strong bond with that child these women will ruin that bond by saying, saying, telling their sons, well, your father, you, you know, the reason why you're here is because of me, because your father didn't want you here anyway. 
You know, I'm like, what kind of shit is that? This is what they tell their kids to ruin the relationship between the father and the son. This is what women do. And then you got these dumbass Negro peer males. Look, look at it. Look at it. Look at this one. Look at this one. Yeah. <laughs> right? These dumbass Negro peer males who, you know, engaging in this destructive behavior because they're getting a little bit of money. Okay? <laughs> or they, they are on some mission that they've been sent to from God, right? <laughs> Yo, these people are so ridiculous. It's, it's a, it really is. I mean, it shows you the, the screwed up mindset that um, that we have, right? And again, we're conditioned that way. And I always say that I understand. So I don't feel a certain way. You know, like I said, I, I you know, we, we're human beings, right? We we have a whole host of emotions, and they're healthy when you can display those emotions. Okay? Just don't, you know. I mean, for, for a lot of, that, this is why black men in particular, you know, have no control over their emotions because when you're raised in, uh, in, a, in a household with just a mother, your mother can't teach you emotional intelligence. You know? I'm saying I had to, when uh, we had broken up and she had that babysitter come, my son was on his computer, he used to get bullied online. And what did he do? He got so upset that he punched his, his monitor and broke his monitor. Right? And so, I looked, I said, why did you do that? Because I was being bullied online. I said, yeah, but there's a better way that you can handle that. You don't punch your monitor because now you don't have a monitor. So, let me ask you something. You getting upset and doing that, who did it hurt more? And he was like me. I said, don't ever do that again. I said, you're not going to get a monitor right now because I'm, I'm not going to buy a monitor right now. You need to learn a lesson. Right, and I think about a month is when I um, later I got him a, a, his his a, a new monitor, okay, and from that he 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 never did that again. And what I end up teaching him was that listen, learn when you see them bullying you online, when they're blocking you or, or what have you or causing you to die, don't get upset, don't get upset. Remember, it's just a game. I said to him, learn what it is that they do and do it back to them. Okay, and now you don't have that problem because you know what? Once you start to notice that pattern, you do it back to them. And I told him, I said, you have to learn and study what people are doing to you. Okay, look at them as their enemy because they're attacking you. Whether it's online bullying or out here in the streets, they are your enemy if they're attacking you like that. And now he doesn't have, have, have that issue. It's like the whole bullying thing. That's solved. That's all. Once he whooped that bully's ass, everybody in the school know about Ethan now. He ain't no sucker, okay? You ain't gonna keep bullying my son. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, like I tell him, I said, listen, I will always have your back and support you as long as you're not the one that's starting. If you are defending yourself or you're defending somebody that's in need of help because they're being bullied, I said, I will always have your back. All right? And so he knows that. And so now, like I said, now he's, you know, and now I'm just teaching him how to, to, to you know, be more uh, courteous and concerned about the people around him, people that, you know, like his friends. I said, but if, you're, if you are with your friends and they are doing things that's not good, then you don't need to be their friend. Okay, you find new friends. Okay? And so just trying to get him into that mindset. And again, being, this is why one of the reasons why, you know, we had built that computer and to donate to one of his classmates that didn't have a computer. You know, to build his, to show him that doing things like that, even as something little as that, right? It makes a big difference in someone's life, right? You know, you gotta teach your, you know, as a black person, as a black man, knowing how we're, we're conditioned, to see each other with this, you know, subconscious hate. <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta bring up, train up a new generation of, of young black men and black women to be different, right? And particularly, you know, young black boys to not just be different, but to be warriors, right? Teach them about, teach them their rights. 
not to be pushovers, and particularly teach them what kind of woman to avoid, just like how you teach your daughter what kind of men to avoid. Fathers are important. I say, but as black fathers, you gotta step up. You gotta step up, right? You gotta step up, man. Because I don't quite understand how some men can abandon their kids. Whether they want them or not, I just don't understand that. They're here, you know? Kids, kids will love you. You know, you don't have to do nothing big for them. Look, putting his hands behind his head. <laughs> in the man in the black shirt right there. On the bus. Wearing all black. See? <laughs> anyway, talk to you guys in the next video.